I did a hostile takeover on the New York Stock Exchange a few years ago so and failed. Um, and uh, uh, we were a smaller company <clears throat> a few years ago and couldn't afford to buy the whole thing. So we teamed up with NASDAQ and decided to go halvesies on it. And we were going to um, split the company into two. And I was going to take part of the business. And uh, Bob Greifeld, who runs NASDAQ, was going to take the other part. And uh, But the Justice Department stepped in and blocked us from uh, from doing that deal. So and, and, the, and the issue was really that they did not want NASDAQ and NYSE getting together. So a couple of years went by, and my company continued to grow. And, uh, uh, and NYSE, from a business perspective, was kind of a drift. And, it, and we got to the point where uh, that we could actually afford it, uh, which was amazing that uh, uh, we could buy it on our own. We're in an almost zero interest rate environment, um, and, and government is, is specifically trying to keep rates low. And as a business manager, and many of you are as well, I know, in here, um, you know, you try to say, gee, this is historically low interest rates. Government is trying to get business to stimulate business, and, uh, you know, you should be thinking about borrowing money and putting it to work. And, uh, and so uh, all of that kind of went into our calculus as to why now and, and, and why the New York Stock Exchange. I think changes are needed in the equity markets. And, uh, um, and I think that the leadership for those changes should come from the New York Stock Exchange. I think um, um, for all the reasons that I mentioned that, that uh, people come and want to have their photograph taken standing in front of it is the reason that it should take a leadership role in, in making the markets better. And so there have been a lot of advances made in trying to protect you and I uh, from these flash crashes, but what we've what we've done so far is we actually just closed the market. If, if the thing starts to crash, we just shut it down. Um, and so that's fine. I mean, it's, it is a protection. Uh, uh, and then, you know, we wait like a few minutes and turn it back on again and see if it works. And so, uh, and if it doesn't, we shut it down. So, you know, I, I think there's room for improvement there. I mean, you know. There's a negative perception of Wall Street, but, uh, but I know from my own experience in building my company that access to capital is, is needed everywhere. And so I think the more we all start to think about uh, finance uh, as a global business that's everywhere, it's not, it's not just New York based, um, the better conversation we can have uh, as a country about, about how to solve our capital needs. And, uh, so I think it's, I think it'll ultimately be helpful. Um, it, it certainly is a reminder that you don't have to have grown up in New York or, go, or gone to an Ivy League school, uh, which I did not, um, to, uh, to be an active participant in these markets. And if you look at what our administration has done since the crisis, it has uh, cut its own spending. It wasn't pretty to watch, but we had the, you know, this sequestr sequestration. Uh, it's raised taxes, um, uh, and it's been printing money. Um, the, the way out of an economic crisis, in my mind, is, to, is that those three levers have to be pulled at different times, in different ways, and, and gently. Um, and so we're used now, because of the media, of watching that sausage getting made. And it's really not pretty to watch that sausage getting made. But in a weird way, as an American, and I stand back and look at, at what government has done, as ugly as it's been, so far, um, at least there is some recovery. And I think we could all argue whether certain levers should have been pulled harder and by who and, and, and so on and so forth, because, because it, it, it is a slow recovery. And uh, all of us would like it to be faster. But on balance, um, the tools that government has to work with are, are what's being used. And it's kind of interesting. To, I don't know that anybody in the two parties would suggest that that's what's going on here, but that's what I see. Legal immigration, um, you know, I think it's in the country's best interest to have a very strong and thoughtful uh, legal immigration system that where we can uh, bring the best and brightest people to this country who want to contribute to this country. and. Um, and my company operates within that sphere. Uh, it's complicated. It's not easy. And 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 um, you know, I, I hope that that government will 
come up with a better legal immigration system uh, that, will, that will really help the country. What I really think we need in this country is, is leadership that articulates uh, a vision on how we use the, what tools government has. And by the way, the other tool that government has is to get out of the way um, and let the free market solve those. But to the extent that government is involved and is using one of those three tools, it would be nice if, if there was an articulate vision and plan and, it, and, and, and it'd be great if it was bipartisan, right? Um, because we'd all feel better about it. And, uh, and instead, I feel like um, um, we've done reasonable things as a country, but, but, but it's kind of been in spite of itself. And, um, and so I really feel we can do better. I, you know, when I'm, I travel a lot abroad, um, and it used to be that you know, people admired the way our government operated. And now when I'm abroad, people are asking us, like, what are you guys doing? You know, there's like this, uh, like, you know, you, you, we look to you for leadership and, 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 and we see just squabbling. Some of that may just be because squabbling is now instantaneous and, and, and through, through all the, the uh, access and transparency and media that we have at it. But uh, it does feel like it's a bit leaderless to me.